All right, we're rolling. Welcome, everybody, to the Pitch Please podcast, where we spotlight Canada's best startups, elevator pitches, and the people behind them. We're here today with Yuri Kaplan from AdMass. Welcome to the show, Yuri. Pleasure being here, Mike. Yuri, maybe let's get started with a bit about your role at AdMass and maybe some background on what brought you here and how you started AdMass. Yeah, sure thing. So I'm Yuri Kaplan. I'm the founder and CEO of AdMass. Um, in terms of kind of what got me here, I guess it's a bit of a journey, but definitely uh, the major reason behind me building AdMass is both my experience, which comes from a software development background and over 10 years of digital marketing experience, where I kind of joined both to create this startup. And the second is ultimately my passion and, and vision, and, and that is redefining what influencer marketing means and creating a very authentic, trustworthy uh, advertising experience for consumers and brands alike. That's amazing. So you took a bunch of your own background of things that you've basically been deep in and brought them together. What do you love most about what you're doing now? I mean, a lot. I, I think startup life is... Uh, it's something that's been inherently in my blood for, for a very long time. Not genetically speaking. Nobody in my family is an entrepreneur, really. Um, but even since a young age, I was always trying to find ways to kind of innovate, if you will. I was playing bingo with my grandma at eight years old. And instead of just playing bingo, I created this marketplace where people would purchase items depending on what how many bingos they win. And uh, then I started a landscaping company. I was in business competitions in, in, in high school. Um, so it's always been kind of within me. It, I never went far with the landscaping company. It was to buy a truck. And then after I bought it, I, I went to school, forgot all about the company type deal. But it was always inherently I wanted to do something beyond. I wanted to figure out something, create kind of a mix between creativity and business. Um and then I did join digital marketing industry about 2009 when I was selling Google ads and I've done it with social media ads and, and, and various industries. And combining all of that, what I have learned um, into a potential uh, innovative solution that helps brands, that, that helps consumers that I truly see is delivering value. Um, it's very exciting. It's exciting to have something in your own hands. You're not relying on a nine to five. You you can work 80, 100 hours and you see that you've worked 80, 100 hours and it's driven more than if you worked 40 hours. Like it's all in your own hands. And of course, there's external circumstances. There's economic climate. There's, you know, people shutting you down and telling you how things aren't going to work. And um, but, but among those, there's those uh, chances to kind of stop, smell the roses and realize like at the end of the day, you're building something with your bare hands, um, you know, your bare mind <laughs> and creating this this solution that could change the world in a positive way. And I think that's a very exciting thing that, that, that makes me feel really good about what I do. Your passion for the entrepreneurial journey really shines through. What would you say was like the the start of that? What inspired you? early on to become an entrepreneur, whether it be with the landscaping company, with the bingo, or what you're doing now with AdMass? That's an interesting, uh, you know, topic. I think, I think it started with the fact that I wanted to make some money and doing, you know, mowing, it went from mowing lawns to laying some lawns to planting some trees. And, and I saw, okay, you know, this way I can get paid. It's funny because I, I remember I applied to like McDonald's, like everybody else was, and I didn't get hired. And then, I, so I just gave up on trying to apply to Tim Hortons and McDonald's. And I, for some reason, I just wouldn't get hired. I don't know if it was my resume writing skills or what. So I just took matters in my own hands and I started, you know, hustling landscaping and then, um, from there, I just continuously kind of did things and eventually I would have a job, but that passion of doing something outside of my day job never died down. And I, I found that it opened up my, my perspective to the opportunity of having a business. So I took business courses. I remember doing a business competition. Um, and I mean, I've lived in Ontario, so I got the fourth place in Ontario, first place in, in my city for the competition. And it kind of sparked that like, Hey, maybe I can do this. Um, I got like an award from the Hamilton chamber of commerce and it, it got me kind of excited about the opportunity that lays there. So th then my mind wouldn't stop. I, I started looking at innovation everywhere. Uh, and, and funny, some of those innovations 
you know, clearly other people were thinking about them because I saw that they were actually being made and they were making people millions and billions of dollars. And I'm like, hey, I thought of that idea. <laughs> you know? And, I'm, you know, clearly there was a hundred other people who thought of it. But the fact that I also thought of it made me think maybe there is something here. Maybe I can do something. Maybe I can change the world through innovation. And I think from there, kind of just I couldn't stop. I couldn't imagine just wanting to do only a nine to five. Um, I, I want to be a business owner. I want to change the world for innovation. You got drawn in. You got drawn in by the curiosity, drawn, drawn in by the, the inspiration to change the world around you. Now, as an entrepreneur today, Yuri, like, what would you say is a company you look up to and why? Um, so the company, I mean, I definitely look up to Y Combinator. Um, I, I consider it, uh, they consider themselves too, they say, oh, we still consider ourselves a startup, uh, which is interesting because, I mean, they've helped, <laughs> the, the valuation of their company is like over $600 billion now and, and climbing very quickly. So um, interesting way to think of yourself as a startup at that point still. But I think what inspires me is the way that they brought opportunity into the world um, and they helped scale so many companies that who knows where they would have been if Y Combinator wasn't there. Maybe they would have been the same place, but maybe they weren't. Um, if you hear some some of the stories of the the startups like Airbnb or some of the greatest startups in the world, you know, um, they, they've had a very interesting and difficult journey that felt like a nonstop boxing match in their own words. And um, hearing about that, not only does that inspire people, but also it makes you realize like, wow, who knows how they have ha helped accelerate the innovation within the world today. So it's kind of like one aspect is, wow, they've already done all of this. And the other aspects, what are they doing today? Because all of the people are listening to these on YouTube and podcasts. And how many people are they inspiring today that will actually facilitate, even if they don't get in into Y Combinator, which it's not easy, obviously. But how many people are they inspiring through this journey, through this education, through their communities, through their startup schools? Um, I think I think it's incredible what they're doing. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that one day I can motivate people like they motivate me. That That's cool. It, it's actually like a, not not a common company, I would have guessed someone would say. And so it's interesting to see your unique perspective on how they're enabling, how they themselves have grown and how it stays really true to the roots around everything that you've sort of talked about passionately, which is entrepreneurship and, and changing the world around you. Um, maybe what we'll do is we'll, we'll pivot into actually talking about how you're changing the world around you. And the way we like to start this part off is to learn a little bit about your startup. But the best way to do that before we dive deeper is to hear your best elevator pitch. And so Yuri, your pitch, please. <laughs> The elevator pitch, the good old elevator pitch. Um, so at AdMass, we help companies increase customer loyalty and save money on advertising by turning their customers into powerful communities of brand advocates that rave about them on social media. Um, so that's, you know, the quick one sentence, uh, a little bit of a long sentence uh, delivery elevator pitch, if you will. But I was hoping to highlight that with an example, if that's okay. Yeah, let's do it. So... I, I'd like to use you as the guinea pig here. And um, what is the recent, most recent brand that you purchased online, preferably an apparel brand, just to make the example easier? Uh, most recent apparel brand that I purchased online. I think it actually might have been Lululemon, to be honest. Perfect. I, it's funny because I always use Lululemon as an example. Um, so imagine after you, you got your item delivered by Lululemon, about two, three days later, you get an email saying, hey, would you like a 20% discount on your next purchase? Um, you say, yeah, sure. I mean, why not? I like Lululemon. Yeah, why, um, why wouldn't I want that? Right? <laughs> so you get directed to the, you click the link in the email, you get directed to this landing page, um, and it tells you all you have to do is post an, uh, a photo of yourself wearing the outfit, tag Lululemon, include hashtag Lululemon um, on Instagram, and you'll get your 20% discount. You do. You verify that you've done it and you receive your 20% discount so you can buy more outfits. Um, that's basically what we do um, in a nutshell. That's super cool. So who who is generally the people that use this? Like who's the purchaser of and user of AdMass? Is it the companies? Can you, can you talk a little bit more about that? 
Yeah, of course. So we definitely we focus on consumer packaged good companies, um, especially the reason I said online is because e-commerce is just great. We can deliver value so much quicker for any e-commerce brand. Um, so we've worked with other brands like Banana Boat. We've worked with Napoleon Barbecue. We've worked with some some brands like that as well, um, as well as a lot of agencies that that have these brands. Um, we have some some larger brands now that we can't disclose the name just yet, but they are globally recognized brands, um, and we're we're very excited about that. Where we deliver the most value is e-commerce space because. First of all, as I just mentioned, you get a discount, you go, you right away buy more products. So instead of the traditional, you know, influencer marketing methodology or even regular traditional media, you automatically get a repeat sale from the customer for this advertising, right? So that's already, you already have money guaranteed in the bank. Um, unless, you know, your product isn't something a customer wants, but then they're not going to post about it anyway. So therefore, you're not going to be charged by using our solution as a brand. Now, um, in terms of the consumer, um, we actually like that's the unique part about our technology is we, we've created an AI, an AI technology that automates this whole process. So because a brand doesn't have to manually verify each post, uh, what that means is every single consumer can possibly potentially use this. As long as they're a consumer that's purchased a product, they can potentially use that. And every post then delivers additional recognition. Kind of the reason behind it is that um, the, the average consumer has mostly friends and family among their followers. Uh, now, a recommendation by a friend and family member is five times more likely to drive a purchase than an influencer or any other um, advertising channel. So not only are you getting that repeat purchase now, you're also getting potential huge exposure, um, three, four new customers just from, from that post. Um, and I, I often say this in a pitch, uh, but after all, you know, who would you rather trust, like Kim Kardashian or your best friend recommending a product they love? That's fair. Now, now, how did this, like before we dive deeper into the product, how did this get started? Like where was the aha moment? And the actually even curiously, the way and how all of this works today. Is this how AdMass started? Not at all, not even close. <laughs> so um, going into it, you know, I've had a passion for business, but I don't specifically like come from an MBA background or anything like that, right? So my knowledge of unique value proposition were quite small <laughs> when I started. I pretty much, you know, me and my co-founder are both tech, we're developers. It was easy for us to spin off a product. We saw huge potential in the influencer space because I, I know the advertising industry and seeing that it's the fastest growing medium, all the, the potential in the influencer space, um, and there's huge opportunity. It's growing at 32% a year, huge opportunity. Um, I'm like, I, I decided, okay, let's start a better influencer marketing platform, right? Um, so we did, and we were scaling it quite quickly. We scaled to like a database of 150,000 influencers, and um, it was growing quite quickly. A lot of brands were registering, but we felt, and it wasn't just us, like we participated in a pitch competition where there was a huge marketing expert. She owns a very big uh, advertising agency and she was a partner uh, with the pitch competition. She evaluated our UVP. She said it was terrible. And, you know, I used that um, that, that amazing feedback to, to spend a little bit more time with her and some of the agency experts there. I requested more time with her. I, I showed her tons of appreciation for everything she's done um, and all the feedback she provided. And you know, instead of being like hurt, like, what do you mean I have no UVP? I'm like, no, you're right. Like, we're not taking off. How do we do this? And she she pointed out, like, the fact is everybody's doing it, right? Like, everybody has an influencer marketing platform. There is one being created three, four, every three, four days. And the, the traditional influencer marketing platform, what is it? It's you have a pool of influencers. Um, you register for that pool of influencers. Uh, sorry, for that influencer marketing platform, you have to find influencers who match and, you know, fit your audience, you collaborate them, with them, there's contracts, there's this, that, back and forth, you send them the product, because most of them don't have the product, right? Um, and at the end of the day, um, that, that's what the traditional influencer marketing solution is. And it doesn't make you stand out. And we've tried different ways of keeping true to that traditional influencer marketing platform. Like at one point, we were doing uh, more local influencers who have smaller followings, but it still didn't feel right. Like something didn't feel right. 
Um, and looking at where the industry is progressing, the industry is progressing to smaller and smaller influencers because they're more authentic. So one day, you know, the aha moment, it was um, the, the big pivot that we did, if you will. I was at a firehouse subs restaurant with my dad. And me, myself, I have 300 followers on Instagram, like nothing, right? I wouldn't, I couldn't register for an influencer marketing platform. I actually don't have enough followers. So I, I was fascinated by this firehouse subs decor. Um, I was just like their decor, their subs are great too, but I had to take some photos and especially it was a family event with my dad. So I, I wanted to take photos. And when I did, all of a sudden my Instagram like blew up. I've never seen so many people wondering, okay, where is this restaurant? What is this place? Wow, it looks cool. Where, how can I eat there? And that was my like click, my eureka moment. I'm, I'm looking for a UVP and there it is. There, I, I am a brand advocate, right? So why not harness this opportunity? So the challenge at that point was, okay, I have 300 followers. You can't manually verify that. So we had to develop a technology that ultimately automates this process by verifying that what the brand wants the customer to post is what the customer is posting. And that means, you know, analyzing the post, the image, the caption, all the things, making sure everything is uh, according to, to government compliance and regulations. And there's kind of, you know, a bunch of technical mambo jumbo in the middle of that. But at the end of the day, it means that we're facilitating the highest level of growth and brand protection for the brand when customers post about them. And we increase customer loyalty because customers now feel appreciated for recommending the brands that they use and love. So at, it, at its core, what is the the problem that you're solving? Is it the actual problem of how to go drive scalable micro influencer campaigns, or is it actually the auditing of it in a way? Like, what's the core of the problem? Then what is what is AdMass uniquely positioned to provide here in in that eureka moment? So I think it's a two tier problem. So. As mentioned, huge opportunity, $16 billion mar dollar market, influencer marketing, um, growing at 32%. The challenge is that because it's such a fast growing market, there is a lot of inauthenticity in the place, in, in space. Uh, in fact, about 13% of all influencer marketing dollars are lost on fake followers. And 87% of consumers uh, believe that influencers don't even use the products that they promote. So it lacks a lot of authenticity and it weighs billions of dollars for brands. Um, and billions to come because it's growing so fast, right? So it's a growing problem. So the natural solution, it, it, it's an obvious solution. Okay, why don't we use smaller influencers, smaller people? Like, what is influence? Ultimately, influence, it, there's kind of this misconception, oh, an influencer is somebody who has a lot of followers. But no, like, if you look at the dictionary definition of influence, it's who can influence the people around them. Right. So th in reality, those are the everyday consumers because they have mostly friends and family. So they can influence a higher percentage of the population. Um, and therefore, that makes for the most cost effective advertising. And we've proved that our case studies show that we're three to four times better than any influencer marketing platform out there in terms of engagement, return on on uh, investment in, in, in terms of earned media value and all of those things. But um, beyond that, so that, that's the first problem. So, okay, let's use everyday consumers. How? So that's a second tier problem is that you actually can't do that manually. And the whole industry right now works on a manual verification process. Um, we're the first and only company who verifies posts automatically using AI. There's companies that deliver verification, of course. There's agencies live on that. Um, but nobody's actually developed a technology like ours. And that is the kind of the second tier problem that we're solving. So um, the, the, the manual verification, the automation, the ability to actually harness the opportunity of these everyday social media users who have less than 2000 followers. Without that, we wouldn't have, without our technology, we wouldn't be able to do that. And without using those social media users that have less than 2000 followers, the everyday consumer, um, you're lacking full opportunity for authenticity in your influencer marketing endeavors and, and solutions. Yeah, it's cool. You're, you're solving the problem in a unique way by offering them the ability to do something and then a way to track it and validate it, which is, which is super neat. Now in, in this space, um, who would you say are your competitors or are there competitors in this space? So, I mean, there's influencer marketing platforms. I, I was recently actually 
for our business plan, writing this out. Something like 14,000 companies out there are doing influencer marketing now. Um, and there's a new platform being created every two to three days for, for creator marketing or uh, influencer marketing because there's so much opportunity in the space. There was $800 million raised last year for influencer marketing platforms. It's huge. It's growing really fast and it's going to keep growing. Um, but there isn't a single company that is actually doing what we're doing in terms of automated verification. Um, so in that space, we don't yet have a single competitor. We were the first to market there. And what that gives us is a unique opportunity to potentially turn all of those 14,000 indirect competitors into potential customers, as long as we move fast enough, of course. Yeah, no, I was just thinking that. I, whether they're the customers or the people paying them are the customers who wish to validate what they're paying for at scale. Um, I think as people try to do more with less funds, they have to be really pointed uh, at making sure those funds are delivering the results they expect. So it's super interesting. Now, you obviously don't have to reveal all of your trade secrets, but like at a high level, how, how does AdMass work? Yeah, of course. So imagine going back to the Lululemon example, um, you posted something with Lululemon. You come back, you verify it. What if you didn't include the hashtags, the mentions? What if you didn't disclose the fact that Lululemon was was giving you something in exchange, like a discount, which is a huge problem? Like that, that's an increasing problem in the influencer world is um, the lack of government compliance. By FTC regulations and Competition Act, it's very important to disclose a relationship like that. And the everyday consumer, they don't do this for a living. That's a huge difference between what we do and your traditional influencer. An influencer runs their account as a business. They're hoping to make a living off of it. We Consumers will never make a living with using AdMass. They will get discounts. They will get to buy more products. They might get a trip to Paris if they promote L'Oreal. But the, there is things like um, there, there, there isn't uh, anything you know, like that, that we can uh, create a whole living off of it, right? Um, so for them, they don't know how to post about the brand. And we provide the proper tools and feedback to say, for example, um, say you didn't disclose the relationship because you wouldn't know that you need to. We say like, hey, why don't you please, uh, you know, say that you're actually receiving a discount in exchange for Lululemon. Say thank you, Lululemon, for providing me a discount or or something like that to make sure that everything is government compliant. And then the second part of that is image as well. We, we give education to the consumer to make sure that the logo is visible. Uh, they might genuinely post and, and want to post a great photo, but maybe they didn't have the logo visible enough. Maybe they forgot to tag Lululemon. Maybe they forgot to do something. Um, again, consumers who post about brands they use and love, they want to put that brand in a good light or else they wouldn't post about it anyway. Um, not for a discount, not for anything. It doesn't matter. But they have to be given the proper tools to facilitate the highest level of growth in brand protection. And that's ultimately where we come in with our AI verification of, of caption, of image, and all of those fine details um, to ensure all that. Got it. So you pick up the hashtags, comb through everything, and are able to use image recognition to say, are these things true? Now, you're also talking a little bit about, um, I guess it's the brand-led campaign and best practices of things they need to include in the campaign that they're running to give out the discount. Hey, make sure you do X, Y, Z as you post. That way we can kind of validate. So there's a little bit of things that users have to do. And then your tool helps capture that across the web. Now, what platforms does this work with today, AdMass? Um, so it, it ultimately, we built it so it integrates into social media campaigns. Um, it integrates into email flows. So it's very dynamic. Uh, we, we are uh, currently developing like a Shopify integration direct. Um, it's, you know, it's launched, it's in beta. Companies are liking it. But in reality, what we're trying to do is uh, create a platform where it can sync, you know, into anything, um, whether that would be um, via landing page or other formats. Like um, it shouldn't be limited to because there is so many e-commerce platforms and a lot of websites are custom. So we don't want companies to be limited and we don't want it to be like a hefty integration and, and necessarily we want it to be like a plug and play solution. Um, so anybody can really use it. Ultimately, um, there is a landing page and they can integrate that into their marketing channels however they wish. 
amplifying it and basically closing that last mile of, of media channels um, with uh, validated testimonials from their customers who, who their customers, their potential customers will, will trust. Got it. And this is on like the CPG brand side. You're trying to integrate it into more things. So every CPG brand, big or small, including ones that eventually have Shopify stores or as part of your beta, can tap into a validated micro-influencer strategy. Now, when people post, is it is it mostly on Instagram or AdMass pulls data across? I guess that maybe that depends on where the brands want them to post. Like where, what does it work with on the on the influencer side yeah so right now we we are doing instagram instagram is kind of the predominant market for it um so we want to make sure that we're very uh, pinpoint focused on delivering the highest level of value um instagram is still a you know we're an early stage startup we haven't even tapped the tip of the tip of the iceberg of instagram um but of course there's other you know solutions like tiktok and things like that that um you know are very interesting um the thing is, there's always going to be new platforms emerging and switching hands. Twitter was very important a year ago. These days, a lot of eyes are on Twitter. So um, who, who knows where that's going to go and it might explode or advertisers might die down even more. Um, so it's an ever-changing landscape. And TikTok wasn't that popular four years ago compared to what it is today, too. So we're always going to have to keep our eye on it. But right now, our pinpoint focus is uh, Instagram. Got it. And where in the equation does AdMass make money? Do you make money from campaigns that are run off like a certain number of influencers that post? Like, what's the monetization method today? And is that the one that you intend to, to drive into the future? Yeah, so that that's exactly why we also want to focus on e-commerce brands so much is because we're we want to make it a risk free advertising experience for brands. Um, right now, we charge per post. And uh, it varies, you know, depending on volume. Um, so it's, you know, anybody can really go to our website and, and contact us for the pricing there. But um, it, it the, the core belief is that we want to charge the brand when they deli- when they get the value, and that value is the post. Now, the reason why it's even so much more advantageous for e-commerce brands than just traditional CPGs that might have a retail distribution pattern, um, the retailers, the the um, the e-commerce CPGs, what they have is they have that opportunity of right away getting value back on their post. So even if for some reason they only have three, four people interested and visit their store from the post, um, then they automatically got at least one sale for every post because they got that repeat discount. They got that repeat purchase from the discount. So they always get at least one sale that way. Uh, potentially, they might get three or four sale and turn every discount instead of one purchase. Turn those, because companies already do that. They offer discounts right now. But when you offer a discount right now on your store, you only get that one repeat sale at best. But if you offer a discount with AdMass, you don't just get that one repeat sale guaranteed. You're also getting three, four potential, maybe even more uh, new sales from, from those followers, leveraging that innate trust of friends and family that we mentioned before. This, this is brilliant, Yuri. Um, so you've obviously launched. How long, how long has AdMass been working on this or how long have you been live? So... As mentioned, there was like pivots and journeys, right? So we started, uh, our original product was like 2020, but we, uh, the the first year was that rocky, figuring it out, where do we fit product market fit journey? And then uh, we really last September commercialized our, our, what AdMass is today, this AI verification system. And we've been, so just over a year, uh, we've been kind of commercialized with our ever, ever evolving uh, product that it is today. And, and how do you measure uh, users? Is it number of companies using AdMass? Like so for CPG us, companies? yeah, I mean, for us, it, it's kind of like traditional SaaS models, right? But um, because it's at the same time, we don't do subscription, we do per post. So we have to evaluate usage. So for us, it's A, yeah, how many companies use it? But B, I guess B and C, B is what their um, their kind of uh, initial campaign size is. 
um, in terms of how, how much they want to spend it. And then uh, C, and it's kind of a, an evolving metric, especially in an early stage company, but how much are they upping their budget? Um, and we've seen we've seen brands. What's been really nice is brands are increasing their budget by an average of four hundred percent with us. So uh, they wouldn't be increasing their budget by an average of four hundred percent if um, you know they they weren't seeing a lot of value. So no, oh, that's amazing. Well, c- c- congrats on the early success. The pivots are all part of it. Um, I'm sure <laughs> everyone we bring on to pitch please is going to have a number of pivots in in their journey. Um, for anyone interested. And we'll, we'll circle back to this later as well. But where where is it available? Is the best place for them to go admass.io or is there a better way for them to get in touch with you? Yeah, definitely admass.io um, is a good one. Um, so the other, I mean, considering I'm on the podcast, uh, I love talking to companies, CPGs. And um, one of our core, you know, and I say this to companies a lot when we do our discovery calls and and kind of demonstrations is uh, I don't want any company that might potentially not see value in our platform to use us. So I I always want to make sure that um, we we only kind of talk to companies and and we deliver value, right? Um, so if somebody wants to reach to me through LinkedIn directly, see like, hey, you know, what would I uh, do? You think this is a good fit for my company? Please feel free to reach in Yuri Kaplan on LinkedIn um, because I would I would love to talk to entrepreneurs. Even if somebody has ideas on how we can improve our product, even if you know you're an investor listening to this, we are raising around right now. So there could be a great many opportunities for me to talk to you. And again, we're all about delivering value. We're all about maximizing uh, customer loyalty and and lowering costs of advertising for brands. So we want to make sure that every single brand that is potentially going to use us is going to get really high value out of it. And um, I'm happy to kind of uh, help along that journey through a conversation prior to you uh, contacting us uh, on our platform. Perfect. Well, well, we'll make sure to link all that. So so now maybe let's talk about like the journey and, and the looking forward. What, what's been your most memorable story? on this journey so far? I think I think coming from a technical background, um, it's interesting because there's kind of two schools of thoughts. There's like, oh, hit the market with an early MVP and just keep iterating it. Um, and there is like, get a little bit, a lot of, uh, you know, a little or a lot of customer feedback up front so that you're not wasting time on, on spend. And of course, it's different in the soft and hard space. Like in the hard space, you have to have a lot of, a lot of R and D before you start really doing the D, right? <laughs> um, but uh, in uh, within software, it's it's a lot, you know. I think easier to get a, an initial product off the ground. So we definitely, you know, a lot of the challenges that we felt uh, along the journey is we went too far into the development, you know, thinking of features A, B, C, without necessarily interviewing enough in between. And that's something that we've definitely improved over time, but kind of going in it, if I could reflect back and, uh, you know, difficult points is going too far in the wrong direction um, before getting enough customer validation. So I guess increasing the kind of, kind of customer feedback loop, if you will, uh, and, and really minimizing the amount of features in between it. Um, definitely something that we can have improved. And the other one is, I mean, we started during the pandemic. Um, now there's all kinds of other economic circumstances that are hurting the world of funding. And um, it's been hard, like, you know, people cutting budget, well, companies cutting budgets, um, uh, investors cutting funding. I think I think it's uh, it's not something when I reflect on it, oh, what could have we done different, not launch the startup? Nothing. But I think in reality, it just shows that timing, and they do say that timing is very crucial to to how a product is uh, launched and how fast it gets adopt, adopted. Um, I think, you know, in terms of influencer marketing growth, our timing is, is spot on there. It's the fastest growing medium. It's a good time to get going on that. But in terms of uh, economic circumstances, it's been um, definitely like a very challenging fundraising environment. Um, so... I mean, we're looking forward to conquer that hurdle there, but definitely been a tough time there. Yeah, I mean, that being said, as we enter times where people are more mindful of the budgets that they 
do have to spend. Um, paper performance type scenarios, uh, validation that the spend that they're giving out works, brands looking to maybe use discounting to drive increased volume of sales during slower seasons. Some of these things actually might all come together to benefit you in the in the months ahead, right? As you think about how your business model works. For, yeah. for you guys at AdMass, like, what does the next six months look like for you? Like, what, what does the next six months have in store in your mind? Yeah, so as you mentioned, you hit that spot on, Mike. It's um, uh, so so they say that you can increase your profits by up to ninety percent by increasing your attention by five, right? And and so just to think there, wow, you can increase. All you need to do is increase your attention. And how do you increase your attention through repeat purchases, right? Um, you can increase your profits by ninety percent. And the other aspect is that. We can actually deliver for the same budget that companies spend now in influencer marketing a hundred times con a hundred times more content a hundred times faster. Um, so I mean, we are kind of built in into the you know the economic climate that's happening today. And although AdMass can be used at any economic climate during recession, like it's a perfect recession marketing solution, if you will, um, because it's it's built in to save money and increase customer retention. The two main things right now that are very important for companies. Um, in the next six months, we, we really want to amplify that. And we want to show companies that um, during, you know, these, these six months undoubtedly are going to be a tough time. Um, hopefully it's not going to last a whole six months, but it, it seems like everybody uh is on the same page globally saying that the next six months will be tough for supply chain for everything um so we want to make sure that companies realize um and and know and, and are able to discover ad mass and its opportunities like you mentioned uh for for this tough economic climate and and how we can help we can uh, how much we can actually optimize the the biggest resource they already have which is their current customer base but at the same time provide them a very high return on ad spend so that they can increase the revenue while spending less um so that's uh, that's our goal in the next six months there i love it what about five years where do you where do you see AdMass in five years what's your aspirational state it's a long so, horizon, I know. But. <laughs> it's hard. You know, you usually think about five-day intervals at a startup in five years. But um, in five years, we want to be kind of the gold standard for tr transparent and, and authentic advertising on social media. Um, as mentioned, we, we did start interviewing people a lot better than we did in our first year. And we did a lot of interviews. And, and, and on top of that, there's a lot of research data showing is that um, regular consumers, they start believing influencers less and less. Um, a lot of platforms are already rebranding it as creator marketing versus influencer marketing because there's been a lot of kind of bad association with influencers. And um, what we want to do is make sure that when people see a post provided by AdMass, they know it's authentic. They know it's trustworthy. They know that it has been, uh, you know, that, that that person did actually get something in exchange. Um, it's not, you know, trying to find these loopholes where it's not transparent advertising, right? Because a lot of influencers do this. Even recently, you know, uh, there's been lawsuits. I don't want to start naming names, but you, you can see a lot of uh, lawsuits with big celebrities that have been sued for millions of dollars because they don't disclose that they're getting paid for brands. Uh, and, and the collaborations like we don't want any post that's ever delivered by AdMass to have that mis misrepresentation. But at the same time, find that that balance with authenticity that drives purchases, drives viral brand awareness for brands and ultimately delivers the highest value while delivering the highest level of brand protection. So going back to our mission, really, we just want to optimize it and, and enhance that to a level beyond of what it is today and continue on that mission. I love it. And we wish you tons of success in doing that. I think what you guys are working on is, is super brilliant and can't wait to continue watching the journey. Um, so people can obviously find out more at admass.io. Uh, I'll link your LinkedIn and any other pertinent things in the description in the show notes. Um, you've been super interesting to talk to. Do you have a recommended one or two startups that you are seeing or talking to that you think we should bring on to the show next because they're doing other cool things as well? Um, yeah, definitely. Thank you, first of all, for saying I'm interesting to talk to. I appreciate that. Um, definitely. Um, I mean, I probably got to kind of think about that one. <laughs> There's been a oh. lot of startups that, that are doing great things. 
Um, definitely, you know, Sampler is a big one that, that's that's doing amazing things for CPGs. Um, there, there is another one that's uh, part of our startup community that we're doing. It's called Good Lawyer. Um, also very, very incredible company. Um, but uh, those are just off the top of my head. In reality, yeah, no worries. <laughs> P- ponder on it. I, it's always good to like get recommendations from cool startups to to hear who they think is interesting. And so maybe whether it's Good Lawyer or Sampler or one of the other ones, maybe you recommend. We'll try to bring them on to the show next. Um, yeah. One more thing before we close out. It, it's a fun thing. I'm going to try to do every episode. Uh, how many times can you say "Pitch Please" podcast fast in a row? Oh wow! Okay, one Ready? Sec. I'm gonna take a sip. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna count. Yeah, get get your drink of coffee. <laughs> All right, I'm good to go. Pitch please, 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 pitch pitch please, pitch please, pitch please, pitch please, pitch please. Are you are you hacking it? You got to do pitch please podcast, pitch please podcast, pitch please podcast. It's tougher that way. Yeah, you got to do the whole thing. All right, redo, redo, redo. Okay. Yeah. Ready, set, go. Pitch Police Podcast, 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 Pitch Police Podcast. All right. I think we got we got you at like 13. That was a solid 13. There's some close trips there. You're setting the bar high though. I like it. Oh man. Well, Yuri, thanks for joining us today. Um, really enjoyed learning more about AdMass. Thank you to everyone who tuned in uh, to the Pitch Please podcast uh, to learn more about AdMass. And we look forward to catching you all on the next episode. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure being here. Thank you, Mike.